Amen. The dog lives. Yes. Now we talked about the nature of the dog last week and about the sin nature and uh, what happens to it and uh, how many glad is you have it disconnected right now. It's not plugged in any longer. Amen. Uh, Mr. Thomas was killed in a bar brawl and his good Christian wife and her son Billy sat on the front row as they had the funeral. And uh, they were talking about Mr. Thomas. The pastor was going on and on about how wonderful he was and how what a, what a great man he was and all the wonderful things he did. And she nudged Billy. She said, Billy, go up there and make sure that's your daddy up there in that coffin. <laughs> <laughs> I had a young man, and he wasn't really that young, but he was a single man in our church. And uh, the shock was, at a later point, he was a millionaire, nobody knew it. Me, real millionaires have uh, interesting uh, concepts for life. They don't, this guy wouldn't tip, I used to get on to him, you need to tip. Because these people are waiting on you, and this is what they do for a living, and did you know that the, they don't pay them hourly wages like everybody else, they expect them to live on tips. Well, he would drive this car. It's the worst car I've ever seen. It was so rusty you couldn't tell what color it was originally. Had, had, he had wires holding the door onto it. it, it he had uh, uh, pipes hanging down so that when he was going down the road it sparking, you know. This car was ugly. Can't even tell what it was. But what was interesting about it was that he had a sign on the back window that says, this car is not abandoned. It evidently had been, uh, it had been hauled off for trash a number of times. And he had put on there, this car is not abandoned. I want to tell you something. The blood of Jesus is upon you. Amen. Apply it every day. Because... There's a sign on you that says you're not abandoned, you're not alone. Hallelujah. Christ has put his name upon you. And you have taken his name and you have taken the bloodline and you belong to him. Come on. Amen. And so there's a sign on you that makes you, I don't care, a lot of us you know, identify, yeah, I feel rusted and run over and have had it and on my last leg. But I'm going to tell you, the sign says you're not abandoned and you're not alone. Somebody get excited about that yeah. saying amen. Yeah. Baptists can get excited, can't we? Sure. Now listen, I grew up, look, let me tell you something about Baptists. I grew up in Brazil. We don't know a whole lot. We don't know better down there. So my mama, nobody could play, so my mama took the accordion and she started doing this. And then there's no beat, so she... And so the people started beating. And so we're Baptists, but we have a good time. We praise the Lord. We sang with all our mind. And we didn't know we were supposed to sit there and be quiet just let the preacher do it all. <laughs> and that's how I grew up. But it was funny because the women sit on this side and the men on this side. The women were all amen and the men are like, you know. And I think I've told you before, it's really interesting in church. I mean, the women down there, they just feed the baby. They just pop the baby on the chest and my mom would be like turn around boy you know because I'm like <laughs> so you know I grew up my, when I grew up in church Baptist church it wasn't probably like what you grew up can you say amen amen <laughs> but we didn't know better we just had a good time in Jesus amen, amen. well I'm going to move right along Christians, sometimes we feel just about as jumped up as that car I was talking about. But God has not abandoned us. He wants us to be overcomers. And in John 10, 10, Jesus said, I have come that they may have life and that they may have it more abundantly. And Paul said, who shall separate us from the love of God? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword or famine or plague? Come on. 
And as it is written, for your sake we are killed all day long. We are, we are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. Some of you, you know, feeling kind of uh, run down and all that. Listen. Endure in Christ. For as it is written, for your sake we are killed all day long. Yet in all these things we are more than conquerors through Him who loved us. Remember we're talking about being a conqueror? It is God's will that you walk in victory. It is God's will that you overcome. Now I've pieced together. Oh no. Where did my book go? I knew this was going to happen. No, seriously, where did my book go? Yes. Yes. Could you steal my book? See how hungry we are from the Word of God? I had it marked with my. Uh, my little uh, tooth oh. cleaner. Amen. <laughs> I have a segment out of my book. I wrote a book some years ago on, on that they use, actually using a few colleges as a, uh, 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 what do you call it, a textbook. And uh, it's on the, it's on out of control behaviors. You know, you got to be prepared for this if you want to read this. You have to talk to me first. But... <laughs> It's got a lot of stuff in there i got to prepare you for. But it's really, really good. And uh, one section here is about body masters. That sounds a little weird, doesn't it? But Paul wrote about this. He said, your body is not supposed to be master over you, but you're to be master over it. Paul wrote this in Romans 6, 12. Do not let sin reign in your mortal body that you should obey its lusts. And do not present your members, that's your body parts, all your, all your parts, as instruments of unrighteousness to sin, but present yourselves to God as being alive from the dead. Amen. Alive from the dead. And your members as instruments of righteousness to God. For sin shall not have dominion over you. You need to say this so your spirit can... Your soul can hear you say this, all right? This is your spirit talking right now. Say this with me. For sin, For sin shall not have dominion, not have dominion over, me. over me. The Greek word for reign shall not reign. Basilio, to rule over a master or to overcome you. We're to overcome, not to be overcome. Paul says not to allow any sin to gain a foothold of addiction. A ruler or be master over you or be king over you or over your life. He's warning us to not present our body's parts to any defilement, whether it be drugs or immorality, any type of sexual perversion, any type of... Uh, can I just tell you, I spent... Look, I'm just going to be honest with you. I spent years, as a, as a pastor all these years, you know, you can't, you, you can't go to the movies without being uh, judged. When you had thousands of people in your church, they saw you everywhere you went. I had to, look, I couldn't even have a glass of wine without somebody, you know, causing somebody to stumble. So I just pretty much had to, I had to pull it straight. But there's one thing I could do nobody would judge me for, eat. <laughs> and I ate everything in sight. I was in a difficult situation with a difficult relationship and a difficult somebody, you know, and, 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 I, and the way I... I handled it was is that I appeased my flesh. Man, I thought every meal, breakfast, lunch, and supper, I had to gorge myself. In fact, I didn't feel like I ate unless I was full. Is any, am I talking to anybody here? And that sin, let me tell you, it became life-threatening. I, I developed a, 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 a disease called diabetes. It was so life-threatening, I didn't think I was going to be able to come past you guys. I was going to take off, but I have gotten a hold of it. But it, it was out of control. Couldn't pull it down even with insulin. It was, it was really out of control. I mean, it, I couldn't get my numbers down to where I was away from stroke level. So God has been helpful to me. But I'm saying, I, what I have sown, I have reaped. What you sow, you're going to reap. Now, it doesn't mean God can't heal me. He healed me from emphysema. I would have been dead 20-something years ago. So God has been merciful to me. But in that time, I had let my flesh go. So, 
He's warning us not to present our bodies to any type of defilement. The body is not to master over you, but you are to master over the body. To the young man who has come into puberty, you know, it looks like God created you for, uh, you know, for a young man who's, you know, every young man struggles with lust. And, and uh, for the young man, it looks like God created you for disaster, you know. Uh, what has God done here, you know? Created all of us men for, uh, to, to, to uh, be destroyed by our own bodies. And uh, I have learned some things. That God meant it for us to overcome the flesh and to become men and women of God. And this is the, the fight of the spirit, of the flesh. And so, uh, it may seem to, to the young man that God has created him in such a way that he can do nothing but fail. But it is God's design that a young man gain mastery over his body. Come on, somebody. Amen. And it is not to be ruled over by his body. And this is how the man comes, becomes a, the young man becomes a man of God. This is what makes the man of God. His spirit is to rule, not his body. And so, there are so many called men of God, and I've known, and you know, I don't want you to start getting afraid to be around me, but I can tell when certain men struggle with anger, or they struggle in their body. I can tell that they're struggling, they'll also struggle with perversions because their life is out of control. I can tell men who pastor great big churches, and, but they're still, their life is out of control. Watch one the other day, he went to the uh, he was trying to be funny. He videoed himself. This pastor kind of used to look like I used to look, just big. And, and uh, so he was, he was, he was going through the, through the buffet line, and instead, instead of taking two, he just took the whole pan, put it on his plate, and went, went and sat down, you know. And I think it was fried squid or something. So I would have probably done the same thing some years ago. But there are so many so-called men of God who are still caught under the rulership of their bodies. Jesus is not fully Lord in their lives because their bodies control them. In 1 Corinthians 6, verse 25. And everyone who competes for the mastery is temperate in all things. Notice that. Temperate. Controlled. In all things. All things? Come on, Pastor. What is you do, What are we looking for? Perfection? No. But the work of Christ in us is perfect. And it's a, it's a word that pushes us towards holiness. Have you ever heard the word holiness before? That's not them crazy people rolling around on the floor over here in that Pentecostal church. Holiness is what God is, the character of God. He's holy. And because he's holy, he does righteousness. He does right. He's, he has rectitude, you know, that he, that's imputed in us through the birth of Jesus Christ in our spirits. So everybody who competes for the mastery is temperate in all, say all things. But I discipline my body and bring it under subjection, lest when I have preached to others, I myself should become disqualified. Athletes who break the rules, what do they do? They become what? Disqualified. disqualified. You take the drug, or you do this, or you do that, they'll disqualify you. Guess what? It happens that way in the spirit, too. Athletes, it is... To, here's, the, here's the point I'm trying to make. To live your life, the life of a Christian, and never bring the body into subject, subjection to the Spirit will disqualify you. Amen. What does disqualify mean? Rejected of God. And it's a very strong word, disqualified refers to, it's the word adikimos. Just saying it, sound like you're cussing, don't it? <laughs> Means cast away. <laughs> Unapproved. Man, let me tell you something, I don't want to be adikimos. Probably if you said adikimos, if you want to insult me, call me adikimos. <laughs> Reprobate. Turned over to the devil. Rejected of God. Brother Victor, this is not sounding very encouraging right now. I'm going to encourage you in a minute. Remember the words of Jesus. It's not... Uh, here's the point. It's, it is a Christian premise to practice self-denial and self-control. Let him who follows me deny himself. I'm talking to Americans here. I said I'm talking to Americans here. 
Remember the words of Jesus. It's more profitable for you that one of your members perish or is denied than your whole body to be cast into hell. Now, let me get back to the, to the, to the sermon that I wanted to finish. Let me see what I got here. Hmm. Glory to God, I got some time. Remember the scripture we talked about? It was our premise that that three ways that we overcome. We overcome by the blood. We gain a testimony by our testimony. And we lay our lives down or we love not our lives unto death. That's three, three ways. We overcome this world. We overcome Satan. We overcome temptation. We overcome attitudes. We overcome addiction. All these things we overcome by the blood. We gain a testimony with the power of God. And we lay our lives down. It always, always requires that we lay our lives down. So to not, to not love your own life, but to lay it down is the power of the cross for the Christian. And Revelations 2.11, we're going to Revelations now. Some of you say, I like Revelations. Don't nobody know what it's saying. <laughs> I read stuff in Revelations and I've never heard of church anywhere. And I'm like, what are we going to do with this? I mean, if you just want to get messed up, read Revelations. I don't want to get you confused, but Revelations 19 and 20 will really get you. It talks about the first resurrection is those who don't take the mark of the beast on their forehead, and then the second resurrection, then Christ rises. And I'm like, wait, I ain't never heard that before. There's stuff in Revelations that'll knock you out of your socks, you know. Probably say, so y'all going to read Revelations now, aren't you? <laughs> so, Revelations 12 and 11, they overcame him by. Number one, appropriating the victory of the blood. Applying the blood of Christ to our lives. Number two, by public confession. I said public. I don't think God is into Nambi Pambi, shy Christians. Are you a Christian? Well, yeah, I don't want this nobody's business. I don't want to talk about it. He wants you to publicly confess his lordship. And so he says that if you confess me before men, I'll confess you before my father. I like, I like uh, Elder Harry's, I learned some things about Harry by being his Facebook friend. He ain't got nothing to say except the word of God. He puts on their scripture, he puts on there some cowboys riding horses, and it gets me every time. And I don't want to, you know, I'm wanting to share it every time. Harry, I'm sorry if I do that too much. But Harry got it going on. He's putting the word of God out. He's not telling everybody, you know, this brother did me wrong. and I'm going to go over there and kick his butt, you know, or something like that. He's not putting that crap that you see on there, you know, putting out your stuff and your laundry. He's always putting the word of God in there. And I really appreciate that about Harry. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Okay. So public confession of their faith, testimony or your witness, and number three, by patient endurance, even in the face of martyrdom. It may be required, I'm going to tell you, if we live, some of us live long enough, that it may be required that we not deny Christ, but lay our lives down. They take, take our heads off, whatever it may be. I even taught my children that. You may think I'm morbid, but you know there's coming a day God will give you grace. But I told them, you may have to lay your life down for Jesus Christ. Amen. And they've been taught that since they were little. They won't be taken by surprise. Amen. Verse 10. Verse 10. Here is the patience or perseverance in the faith of the saints. I don't know if you knew that this thing you've gotten into is real. But it's getting more real. Amen. That's right. They overcome here. The word overcome here is a military terminology suggesting combat against the forces of the evil one. We're in a war. You signed up for an army. I see arising the army of the Lord. Amen. I see an army rising. I don't want to be led by the crazies on Facebook that seem to be all be my friend. But I do want to be led by the Holy Spirit and by the Word of God that there's an army rising. There was an army rising in the Ukraine where thousands, I'm, going to pro I'm not going to cry, thousands of young people begin to march into the streets of Ukraine 
singing Jesus Christ is Lord. They are under crisis. We need to pray for them. Thousands, they fill the streets declaring that Jesus Christ is Lord. They weren't crying out, Lord save us. They weren't, oh, the Russians are coming, the Russians are coming. They profess Christ as the risen Lord and Savior. Man, I'll tell you what, that kind of stuff makes me tremble and weep and cry. I love to hear stuff like that. I started, listen, I'm such a, I'm ter I got to turn in my man badge, I guess. I, I started crying in a Walmart because they, they, were, they were playing worship unto the Lord's songs in the middle of Walmart. I couldn't take it. I just sat there and I just started wiping my eyes. It, it, just, it just does something to me when I see that the Lord God out there in the marketplace, people proclaiming him publicly as Lord and Savior, it gets to me. Come on, somebody say amen. amen. So all believers, I'm just going to shock you with this. Not all believers are overcomers. Amen. Not all Christians are overcomers. Amen. As a matter of fact, I don't want to be negative, but a lot of Christians are overcome. Just see it in their lives. They're bitter. They're unforgiving. They're overcome by addictions. They've been run over. I'm glad they got a sign on there that says they're not abandoned. They're not alone. Come on, somebody say amen. Amen. But they're run over. They're hurt by the church. I remember telling the Lord, I love you, but I hate your people. <laughs> people can be nasty. Amen. <laughs> but the world is worse. I don't care what you say. I tried both. Only healing you're going to get is through Jesus Christ and the love of the love of the belonging to the beloved. Those who come to through the blood of Jesus are those who remain faithful in the midst of persecution, and it's coming. I don't. I'm not doomsday. I'm just telling you, be ready. It's coming. In the middle of doctrinal error. That's coming. It already is here. It's here. Yep. I'm watching stuff on television that's as off as, as off can be. Mm -hmm. It pushes people towards a man-centered gospel. It's no longer Christ-centered. And he's not passing out Coca-Cola. It's uh, we're fixing to have communion. Amen. Get your hearts ready. Proof of their faith. That we're to maintain this testimony, a willingness to lay our lives down. Lay your rights down, everything, your desires down. Listen, there needs to be a Christianity that lays your desires down. Lays all your hopes and dreams down. I, God's going to help me develop my dreams, you know. This is the millennial talking. Where does it say that? It says that we're to raise up. His name and His standard and the kingdom of God. We are preaching the kingdom of God has come. And when that comes, Jesus Christ is coming back. Come on. Amen. Amen. When you see the finger of God, the Bible, Jesus said this Himself. When you see the finger of God casting out devils, you know that the kingdom has come. There are, more, there are devils. They're not going anywhere. We think they disappeared, you know, since we've come to the age of enlightenment, but it's not true. They're, they're, they have been here. They, are, they, have, they're, they have lived longer than you have. You don't stand a chance without Jesus, but through Jesus Christ, we overcome all things. Amen. 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 Sorry for getting excited. Let me end with this. Re go to Revelations if you have your Bibles. I'm going to give you, and I know you're thinking, well, you haven't got much time. I'm going to very quick. Seven things, promises that if we overcome, God's going to do this for us. Now, remember, our text was Revelation 20, verse 1, verse 7. He who overcomes shall inherit what? All things. Say all things. All things. And I will be his God, and he shall be my son. So we see an inheritance of all things that pertain to God. And we see sonship as sons and daughters of God. This sonship is an inheritance. You are God's son and he is your father. I don't know about you, but I get warm all over just talking about it. Amen? 
Oh, I miss my daddy. My daddy was a good father. He's in heaven now with my other father, my heavenly father. And, and I am not alone. Amen? I'm not uh, uh, abandoned. Amen. Amen? So, number one, Revelation 2.11. The first thing, to him who overcomes shall not be hurt by the second death. What's that talking about? The second death is eternal separation from God. To be completely shut off from God. Don't you know that Jesus Christ, when he was on, the, it wasn't the pain that he, that he didn't look forward to. It, 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 you know, not that he, it wasn't, it, what was it? It was being, for the first time, the Trinity will be separated. That because of the sins of man, that the Son would be separated from the Father for the first time. And this is what caused Jesus to weep in the garden. That the Trinity would be separated for a short time. But you know it didn't take very long because it went and descended to the earth. It brought up Abraham's bosom. Preach, declared himself the Son of God, got the keys of death, hell, and the grave, and two, and he said he, he led captivity captive. He led all of them, Abraham, Moses, all those guys, followed him up before where he poured the blood of, of where he poured his blood out before his father. And they all came in. It says he led captivity captive. In other words, he led them out of Abraham's bosom. Come on now. Amen. We're gonna talk about is there a hell and is there a heaven? And we're gonna talk about where they're at here pretty soon. The Bible is very clear where hell is. Come on now. The Bible is very clear where hell is. We know where hell is. And then it's talking about a new heaven and a new earth coming down. We're just going to look at the scripture. We're not going to talk about man's opinion or what I think. We're going to just look at what the scriptures say. You need to understand there's a hell and there's a heaven. Come on. And uh, number two, seven eternal rewards of, of an overcomer. Number two, Revelation 2, 7. To him who overcomes, I will give to eat from the tree of life. This symbolizes spiritual sustenance to maintain eternal life. It's found in the Word of God and by the Spirit of God. And so, in Revelation, the tree of life comes through Revelation, comes through the life of His Word in you. Number 3. Verse 17. To him who overcomes, it always starts with to him who overcomes. Did you notice that? It's, it doesn't say to him who is saved. It doesn't say to him who, who is a Baptist. To him who is a Catholic, it says to him who overcomes. How do we overcome? By the blood of the Lamb, by our testimony, we lay that down our lives unto death. So to him who overcomes, what are we overcoming? The world, Satan, addictions, all these things that come in, sin, we're overcoming sin. Hello. Amen. We're not seeking perfection. We're seeking God's presence, his power. We're seeking to overcome by the blood. We're seeking to live for Jesus. We're not seeking perfection. To him who overcomes, I will give, this is verse 17, some of the hidden manna, this is the bread of life in Jesus, to eat. And I will give him a white stone. See, we read stuff, we don't know what it means. This is a jury in that day. If you got a white stone, you were acquitted from the judgment that you were, that you were under. Casting a white stone in the urn. In other words, he's going to, he's going to, he's going to, you're going to escape judgment. And on the new stone, a new name written. It refers to the imputed character of Christ, and a new person needs a new name. <laughs> Remember Jesus, when he came and died on the cross, then God said, I, a new name that I have given you in him, you know? And God gave him, a, you know, Jesus, he's given a new name by which all heaven must bow. You know, he's the one who has overcome on the blood on the cross for us. Because he has overcome, we overcome through the blood of Jesus. Amen? Amen. And so, number four, verse 26, to him will get, uh, who overcomes will I give him power over the nations. 
Not only is it in the age to come, but even now, to him who overcomes, I give you power over the nations. To overcome, we'll share in, what it, what's happening is, is you're sharing in Christ's triumph and rulership. We're sharing in it. A good husband doesn't say, well, since I'm the man, you know, you're going to have to do what I say. No, what a good husband says is, come up and sit beside me in high places. She's not under him, she's beside him. What a good husband, uh, you know, this is what Jesus says to the bride. Come, sit with me in high places. Amen. He places her, every right and inheritance he has, he gives to her. He will die for her. She actually has a better place than he does. He will lay his life down for his bride. Are you listening? Yes. Don't demand your rights. Your rights are better. Come on. He, and, and, and let me tell you something else. If he don't treat you right, God don't hear his prayers. Nowhere I've looked. I looked and looked. Nowhere does it say, women, if you don't treat your husband right, I'm not going to listen to your prayers. But he says that to the man. To whom much is given, much is required. I know when my prayers aren't heard, I'd be praying and it bounces off the ceiling. Hits me back in the face. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Yeah. <laughs> I'm almost done. I'm almost there. Here's the biggest one. Are you ready? 3 verse 5. This one's going to knock you out of, your, out of your chair. If you're hanging on that you said a prayer one time and you're okay, you better read this scripture. This is Revelation 3 verse 5. Are you ready? He who overcomes shall be clothed in white garments. You heard that before, right? But notice this. And I will not blot out his name from the Lamb's book of life. It's written. You were saved. But you need to overcome. I will not block his name from the Lamb's book of life. That means it's possible that it was written and then he blocks it out. Because you did not live for Christ. But I will confess his name before my father and before his angels if you overcome. Amen. You're not used to you're not used to this, are you? Verse 12. Number 6. Reward from overcoming. I will make him a public a pillar in the temple of my God and I will write on him my new name. You will take his name. You will take his blood. You become part of the family. You're not just adopted. You have been given the name of the family. You are in the family of God. You are a son and a daughter of the living God. And this royalty hand over house over there in, uh, in, in England can't touch it. Yeah. I know, where do they come from? Lords who overcame other lords, you know, and finally, and this is the royal bloodline. Are you serious? There's no royal bloodlines. Just men who overcame other men gained, gained dominance. Come on now. My wife, in case you didn't know, is a direct descendant from the first king of Norway. But I tell her all the time, you just, you just like me. <laughs> I know why. American with everything in me. I'm still trying to find out if I got any American Indian in me because every once in a while I want to take a scalp, scalp, you know, and wonder where that comes from. You know what I'm saying? I know y'all don't feel that way. The last one, number seven, verse 21. To him who overcomes, I will grant to sit with me on my, on my throne. Jesus is beside the throne, sitting next to his father. Am I right? Yeah. I will grant to you to sit with me on my throne. As I also overcame and sat down with my father in his throne. <whistles> Seated with him in high places, a place given to the overcomer. Jesus asked this question, when I come, will I find such faith to overcome on this earth. In closing, 
Polycarp, I don't know if you've heard of him, he was the bishop of Smyrna. He was the son, spiritual son of, of the Apostle John. And this bishop, who was disciplined, or excuse me, discipled under John, he was arrested and sentenced to death under Caesar, the Roman proconsul. And they gave him a choice to curse the name of Jesus or die by the burning of the stake. He was testifying of his faith in the streets. And they didn't want it. Just like in Canada and England now, you can't, if you if you preach in the public out there, they'll arrest you. So he was doing this. And when they approached to tie him to the stake, he shouted out this, Leave me alone as I am. He who gives me power to overcome. To overcome the world will give me power to endure this fire. Just leave me untied. I will endure this. I bless the Lord for thou hast granted. He, he raises his hands to you know, the heavens. He says, Lord, I bless you. For you have granted me this day to share the fellowship of the suffering and the drink from the cup of the martyrs and to receive the martyr's crown. I laid my life down willingly for you. And he was consumed with the fire. February 23, A.D. 155, Polycarp paid the price and went to heaven. The payoff was worth the price. The payoff was worth the price. Will you bow your heads with me? Father, I address any condemnation today in one who just wants, feels pushed away from the throne and I, I give up. I'm having this problem. I have that problem. I got this addiction. I got that. And now I just feel like, hey, I can't even live this Christian life. I rebuke that as a lion spirit commanded to go. Commanded to leave the ears of your believe, your your, your uh, precious believers here this morning, but now, Lord, by your Spirit, induce yourself, Father, in them to overcome all things, to overcome the flesh, and to overcome the world, and to overcome the works of Satan through sin and, and through addictions and through uh, the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the lust of the the flesh and the lust of the. Uh, Pride of life, that's it. The pride of life. And we overcome all things by the blood of the Lamb. And we gain the testimony of our faith. And we lay our lives down. If you agree with this, will you say amen? amen. Say, Lord, I, 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 I want to overcome. Tell them, Lord, I want to overcome by your blood. And I do it right now in the name of Jesus. Conscious decision now as, as I live my life that I'm going to overcome by the blood of the Lamb. Amen.